the worst, most unfair thing a teacher has ever done to you or a classmate? Story one, my fifth grade teacher misses. Hannah would bully this kid that obviously had serious behavioral family issues. She was not at all sympathetic to him and literally made him sit in a cubicle desk the entire day that she called the box. It was so infuriating and humiliating to watch. She also once told me she was going to nail my ears to the wall. So I reported her. I hated her so much and I felt really bad for the kid that she really scapegoated. Hope he's doing well today. Story two. In first grade, I didn't want to eat a brownie that a classmate had brought in for their birthday. My teacher decided that this was incredibly rude and that I wasn't allowed to go outside for recess until I ate the brownie. When she wasn't looking, I wrapped it in a napkin and placed it carefully in the garbage can. She noticed, took it out of trash, unwrapped it, and still made me eat it. Story 3. My 6th grade math teacher didn't believe my mom signed my homework sheet because the signature was messy. In all reality, my mom did sign it but was in a hurry. My teacher wanted to give me detention for a fake signature, but I insisted she call my mom. My mom told the teacher she did sign it but was in a hurry. The teacher called my mom a liar and gave me detention anyways. Fudge you, Mrs. Cooper. Story 4. College Physics We had like four question exams, but if we made any trivial area in our work, even if we arrived at the right answer, he would take off like 23-25 points, which would essentially cause your grade in the class to drop by a letter grade. One time he was doing work on the board and made a mistake like that. One of the students got up, wrote F on the board, and walked off. Story 5. I had a teacher in high school who hated me. I wasn't the best literature student, but I hardly deserved her treatment. She once ripped up a paper of mine in front of the class, saying it was the worst thing she ever read. I had to get it graded by the English department. My uncle worked at that school as a guidance counselor, but before that he was the English head when this particular teacher started. I think she took out her hate from my uncle on me. Story 6. My father passed away early morning of the first day back at school for the year. He had been sick a few months, and most of my summer holidays was me visiting him at the hospice. At the end of the previous school year, the school decided to change the school top. I went back to school day two and I was called up to the vice principal's office because I didn't have the new shirt. They knew my father had passed away the previous day. I was told if I didn't have the right shirt tomorrow, I would be suspended. I had to scrape together the money and get the bus to the shops to get the shirt that day because my mom was dealing with enough cow and I didn't want to add to it. That was the day I stopped caring about school and it was a real turning point for the worse in my life. I was an A student before then. Story 7. Gave me a zero because I never clicked a link to an article we were supposed to summarize. It was on Blackboard, so apparently it tracks who clicks what. I play a lot of games and use my computer a lot, so sometimes I just highlight and control C. This is probably a habit I developed from playing Counter-Strike and URLs opening in the Steam browser, but I really can't remember where it came from. He asked me who I copied my work from, and when I contested and showed him how I go to URLs, he refused to believe me. I received a zero, and when I asked him to prove that I copied my work from someone else, he refused to do the work. Story 8. I asked my 6th grade science teacher if he could switch my seat to the front of the room because I was having trouble seeing the board. I wear glasses and have just real cow eyes, and he decided for some reason that I had an ulterior motive for wanting to be in the front of the room. To punish me for trying to pull one over on him, he moved me to the very back of the room for the rest of the year where I could not see the board at all, so I learned nothing that year because we didn't have textbooks. Everything was put up on the board. Story 9. My dad punched me in the face and left a bruise. I wore sunglasses to ninth grade row hit it, and in the middle of one class the teacher was yelling at me from the front of the room to take them off. I asked if we could speak in the hallway and she kept yelling at me. I took them off, and everyone was shocked and focused on me the rest of the class. Exactly what I was trying to avoid. Day ended when my dad showed up at the school and explained I was troubled, and he was taking me out early for counseling. He ended up dropping me off at a hospital and Baker acting me and left me there for two. Three months until I was released to my mom's care. Didn't speak to me for five years. Yes, that's really messed up up. Story 10. Got thrown into a group with Chinese exchange students who could barely speak English. Cool, but I had trouble understanding them. It is what it is. I have no problem with them. I was concerned that the language barrier would be a problem in a group project, and I asked if there were any open spots in other groups. My teacher basically called me a, insinuated that I was a bigot, and bigots like me have caused him lots of pain, and asked me to switch classes. A month into the semester, I'm talking to the dean now. What really sucks is that I liked my teacher and being called by him hurt. Story 11. Chemistry class I was getting bullied once. The guy decides to mock me and take my lab sheet I was working on. Tears it up right in front of me with a huge grin. I go up and inform the teacher I need a new one and why, and she tells me that I shouldn't be goofing around and fails me for the lab. I literally told her that this kid was bullying me and I was minding my own business, but she wouldn't relent. 
Story 12. In seventh grade, we had a group project to create a magazine. Our group's magazine was supposed to be animal-themed, with articles being written by animals for animals. I was assigned to write a poem. Now, I've always been a good reader and a decent writer, and I wasn't bad at poetry either. On top of this, my father had commissioned a painting with the Clock of Life poem on it around the time I was born. I grew up loving the painting and the poem. I took inspiration from that poem, a theme of time running out. That's all. And I wrote a good poem. It was done days before the due date, but I forgot our animal theme. On the day it was due, I quickly adjusted man to mammal and such changes. It really messed with the meter, but it was done. Now, my painting went to another student, our editor, and he compiled the magazine before turning it in. So it was a week or more before the next step. My teacher pulled me out of class into the hallway. He told me he knew I had copied the poem and that I would get a zero. I protested my innocence, of course. He said he knew it wasn't mine because it was too good for a student to write. Tearfully, I still told him I wrote it. He said that if I insisted, he would find where I copied it from and give me a zero and get me in trouble when he did. This sounded fine to me since there was nothing to find, and I really wanted to get away from being yelled at. When grades came out, I learned he'd given me a zero on the poem anyway. In addition, the magazine was returned to the editor, not the individual contributors, so I never got my poem back. I can't even remember the words now. But this was one of the traumatic points in my childhood that taught me not to listen to authority. Later, in high school, I wrote a journal entry for another English teacher about the experience. I didn't realize it at the time, but she shared the original teacher's last name, Beck. She happened to be married to a history teacher of that name. When she graded my journal, she apologized to me and insisted she was no relation to the original teacher, which was kind of weird, but it did feel nice to have some acknowledgement of how messed up the situation had been. Story 13. High School French Class it was my birthday and the teacher gave me this small bag of candy and a cute note. I thought it was really thoughtful because you don't really expect teachers to give a cow about your birthday in high school. I thank her, pop a piece of candy in my mouth, and promptly got a detention for eating in her classroom. I was shocked and nearly cried because it was my first detention ever. Everyone else was just as surprised and started arguing with her, but that bad person wouldn't budge. And that's my story of how I got my first ever detention by eating a piece of candy the teacher gave me on my flipping birthday. Story 14 when I was a sophomore in HS, they did interviews for the NHS. One of the teachers said that they noticed that I am bullied a lot, but handle it very well. They wanted to know how I did that? Bad person? I had been bullied for eight years at that point, and none of you ever thought to step in and intervene? I thought that they just never noticed, or that they didn't see. You saw and you did nothing? You knew and didn't care? It's been well over 15 years and I'm still sour AF about it. Story 15. Maybe not the worst, but two examples spring to mind. First up, someone threw a stone at another kid. I was pedestrian to the whole thing. Teacher literally comes storming up to me and drags me back inside. The kid who got hit by the stone didn't know who did it. The teacher forced him to point the finger at me so I got the blame, even though I knew who did it. Also, they were confiscating yo-yos after a kid hit himself in the face while doing a trick. But a few of us found a sneaky little area where we could hide behind a wall and use our yo-yos. Not sneaky enough, though. Got mine taken off me. Come and get it at the end of the day. Go to the teacher to get it back, and he says, what yo-yo? It was a good one, too. God, oh, no, you, Mr. Whitaker of Pakefield Middle School. God, oh, no, you. Story 16. I was chosen for a dance competition in school in third grade. Since it was a girls' school and I was not very thin, I was playing the boy for a couple dance number. After a week of practice, I was enjoying myself, and the teacher had taken money from us for costumes. And one morning, I wasn't visited by my partner to call me for practice. Assuming she was absent, I requested my class teacher to let me go for practice. I'd been almost 15 minutes late, and I ran my way to the room to see some other girl dancing with my partner, and I went in apologizing to my teacher for being late. And she pulled me out of the practice room and told me they had taken someone else, and I kind of begged apology for being late. She got frustrated and told me no, they wanted someone better looking and thrust my money into my hand. I ran and sobbed my way to my classroom where my teacher told me to quiet down or leave class. It was one of the most painful memories of my childhood. Later, I found out the teacher had replaced me with her niece, and I was a stand-in an unaware stand-in, so that practice wouldn't be interrupted. Story 17. In the sixth grade, I was really into art, and my older sister had just been in an art show, so I was constantly doodling. So on my first day in my third period class, I had Mrs. Wagner in math skills. I was a shy, sweet girl, always trying to make my teachers happy. We all sat down, and I was in the front row. I had a beautiful picture my sister drew for me. I was showing all my teachers. Mrs. Wagner was standing in front of me. She looked over the class very seriously. Since she was in front of me, I showed her the picture telling her my sister made it. Yada yada, she smiled and said, that's a great picture, but we don't do art in here, she responded. Okay. Felt a little embarrassed, but whatever. 
I notice my pencil needs sharpening, so I go to sharpen it. As I return, class has begun, so I'm focused. Until the girl behind me let me know that my picture was missing. And misses. Wagner crumbled the artwork and trashed it. I was shocked and hurt. That class was very difficult. The class was always disruptive due to her strict attitude alone and gave me a poor foundation in math. She constantly told us we wouldn't make it. Also, keep in mind this was a middle school in a big poor city. So thanks, Mrs. Wagner, you insufferable bad person. Story 18. A teacher, who already didn't like me at all, asked me to turn the lights off so she could play something on the projector. And she got pissed off at me for being unable to reach the lights because I'm four flipping feet tall. She sighed loudly and said, of course you can't even do that. Other student's name, can you do it, please? The reason she disliked me is because I was generally unmotivated and behind class. Turns out I was very depressed at that time, verging onto the sky. Yes, I didn't finish homework and I started skipping class. But just a year ago, I had been a highly motivated star pupil who enjoyed class. I feel like that kind of dramatic change should set off alarm bells. Would have been nice if she asked what was wrong rather than get angry at me all the time. Especially for having dwarfism. Like, what the fudge lady? Story 19. I told this story pretty recently, but I had a substitute in elementary that I really disliked. I was out of the classroom for some reason. Can't remember why exactly, but I think it was a Cub Scout sign-up thing. I get back to the classroom and everyone is quietly working. I asked the sub what the assignment was, and she snapped at me saying that she wasn't going to explain it again. I asked some classmates when I sat down and they told me we had to write about a hot day. As a fourth grader, I never really paid attention to outside temperatures, but thanks to the sandlot, I knew that 150 degrees was hot. When it was my turn to read, the sub only let me get out my first sentence before she yelled at me in front of the class and told me that she wasn't going to listen to my paper. Like, bad person. You didn't tell me the friggin' assignment. How the hell was I supposed to know it had to be a true story? Story 20. It was a super sunny and hot day and I was in class. Then I just wanted to take a quick sip on my bottle. Other teachers had no problem when it is such a heat. And it was three days before summer break, so nothing was really happening anymore in school. And then the teacher noticed me and came over to my place. He then said something like, Either you put that bottle away, or you go outside the classroom and do whatever you want. 16 y -O me just went outside the classroom and my classmates were going nuts because he probably expected me to just put my bottle away. He got super angry as I closed the door and took a seat in the hall. I just heard him complaining about me and so on. After five minutes or so, he came out and sent me to the principal. The principal was chill and I had no consequences. But from this day, the teacher always hated me and gave me bad grades. Because I wanted to drink something on a hot day. Story 21. This one stands out in my memory for just how absurd it was. I was in 8th grade, and for reasons that I can't remember now, I was supposed to bring an empty soda can to my Earth and Space Science class. I didn't have time to get back to my locker at any point that morning, so I had to carry it with me. My school had a no food drink in class rule. But obviously the can was empty, and another teacher had directed me to take it to class. So it would be fine, right? Nope. I had this teacher for a class that was essentially designed to teach 14-year-olds how poor it was to be poor. Guy was about 6'10 and weighed maybe 150 pounds. You could push him under a door, and he was a banana. He sees the can and immediately raises his voice, points to the can and says, Throw it away! I start to protest since I had a reason to have it. But before I could say two words, he interjected, no excuses, throw it away now. I explain that it's for my Earth and Space Sciences class, but he doesn't care and won't hear it, so I have to toss it. I get to my Earth and Space Sciences class, and when my teacher asks for it, I explain to him why I don't have it. He left the classroom, and I don't know what happened in the intervening time when he was gone, but the angry pencil didn't give me cow for the rest of the semester. Seriously, what a banana. Story 22. My second grade teacher was doing an arts and crafts thing for Father's Day. We had to make a paper clip out of some materials with the shape of a mouse out of felt. She said to start at the sides, but me being the enthusiastic idiot that I was the shape from the middle. Instead of saying Oracle, you should have started at the side, she took everything away from me for wasting felt and said I could not make anything. So I had to come home, tell my mom we did nothing for Father's Day, which was unusual as we did something for both Mother's and Father's Day each year. She found out from some of the other parents that they had made something in class, and I confessed when confronted with it. My mother was mortified hearing how my teacher treated me. The teacher had a pick on me all year, and to this day I still despise that woman. Instead of using my mistake as a teaching moment, she turned it into a horrible memory that I carry to this day, even though it is quite silly in the grand scheme of things. In my life, many people have wronged me, and I rarely hold a grudge, but what she did to a small seven, eight-year-old boy who made a dumb mistake and how she treated me that year will stay with me for life. In the end, it did give me a valuable lesson, 
Never ever punish a kid for harmless mistakes which can be used as teaching moments instead. That and some people just deserve to pass away lonely, miserable, and forgotten by everyone. Story 23. When I was in first grade, the first Harry Potter movie came out, and I brought the movie to class so our class could watch it during our Harry Potter event. I forget exactly what I did wrong, but apparently the teacher turned me into a muggle, and at the end of the Harry Potter event, she gave the whole class candy except for me, and I cried. My mom called the school and was furious at the teacher, and she never apologized. So even though I brought the movie, I was the only one without any sort of reward at the end of the event. Story 24. I was walking down the hall one day, and I hear a teacher yelling at someone about how they hadn't been to class in two months. Then I hear a boy's voice yelling, I have cancer, and see my friend who I hadn't seen in a while walk out of the classroom with his backpack over his shoulder. It was common knowledge in the school that he had some sort of lymphoma. We had had announcements, the teachers were all aware, and we had even had events to support him. He was one of those kids who everyone knew and was rooting for. He passed away four months later. Fudge yourself with a rake, miss. Cronin, and not the fun end. Story 25. I was the poor kid in class. Severely poor. I never had new clothes. My mom brought home giant bags of hand-me-downs from her co-workers, and I took what fit. I got bullied for it regularly. Fifth grade? We were going to be going on a field trip to an art museum or something. The teacher was telling the class about it, that it was a nice place. She then looked at me and said, I hope you in particular would dress a little nicer for the occasion. I just nodded my head and looked down. I could hear all the other kids giggling. I still remember that moment of humiliation 20 years later. Fudge you, Mrs. Wolgast. Story 26. When I was in 10th grade, my math teacher, a super nasty and mean woman who was like 65 or 70, screamed and kicked out this one girl for wearing one of those crop top skirt things. She called her a bunch of names and the girl looked like she was about to cry. Our school had a dress code, but it was never really enforced. But I will never forget the math class where the teacher decided to waste like 25 minutes over a girl who was showing like half an inch of skin. Story 27. High school freshman year English teacher didn't like my attitude or penmanship, lefty, so she recommended I be sent to remedial English sophomore year. It took two classes in sophomore year for the teacher to figure out I didn't belong there, but the freshman teacher was also the department head and wouldn't approve my transfer. So he gave me an A, a list of books to read, and asked me to help out leading discussion with the rest of the class. Story 28. Ninth grade in science class. Class is all working on homework silently. Teacher calls me to her desk. She knows that I want to be a video game designer. I had already made several games by ninth grade. People didn't know about everything I did. Teacher tells me that I need a good backup plan and that I probably won't be a game designer. She tells me how hard her son had to work to work on special effects for one of the Harry Potter movies and that it's very unlikely that I will get very far. I just sat there listing her tell me I won't realize my dreams and I should do something else. I say okay and go back to my seat to work on homework. Everyone in the class heard the conversation. Friend asks me if I'm okay when I get back to my seat. Confused more than anything. Since then, I've made several game apps for Android and have become an accomplished graphic designer. I didn't need to get hired to be a game designer because I started my own game business. Story 29. One of my teachers had a bit of a breakdown and her screaming caused one of my classmates to have an epileptic fit. However, the teacher thought he was faking it and stood over him screaming at him to get up. Whilst we were all aware of his condition, he was still going through diagnosis but the school gave us training on what to do when he had an episode. We started clearing the tables and chairs around him so he wouldn't hurt himself, and someone ran off to get the school nurse. The teacher lunged at her as she tried to leave the room and knocked her into a filing cabinet, but she managed to get out and get the nurse. Luckily, the nurse at my school was a bad peach, and as soon as the teacher started screaming at her, she replied with a quick backhand, and the teacher stormed out the room. Story 30. I had a cooking teacher that was just generally a total bad person every day. But in particular, she had a very strong and obvious hatred for the few sapphic girls in our class because she was extremely religious. She would harass them constantly about any little thing she could pretend was a problem. They couldn't talk to each other specifically or even stand sit too close to each other without being sent out of class. Story 31. A kid at my HS years ago brought with him his Bible. He was very religious but kind and not forceful about his beliefs versus yours to English class as we could read our favorite book when we were done with classwork. English teacher sees it and makes him take it to his locker saying, literature like that does not belong in my classroom. You could almost see the tears in the kid's eyes. He later graduated with honors and is now a youth pastor in Milwaukee. Story 32. Not nearly as awful as some stories here, but I remember back in fifth grade when we were getting ready for our spelling bee competition and the two reps from our class had to be one guy and one girl. Our teacher was not a fan of guys for some reason, but that's an entirely different number of stories. 
So the girl teacher's pet is told to spell a word, gets it wrong, but the teacher said to try again. Gets it wrong another two times. Teacher starts slowly saying the correct letters, and the girl says them until eventually the teacher applauded and says, Okay, you're in the finals, congrats. So my turn comes along. I don't recall the word I had to spell, but I get something like three letters into it and told, Nope, next. I ask her what I got wrong since I'm sure it was right so far, but I just got yelled at and put in the hall for an hour. Teacher decides that another girl should replace the guy since we weren't up to the task apparently. Story 33. In shop class, we were given balsa wood sticks and clay to make the strongest bridge we could, which would be tested by putting the bridge between two desks and then placing weights on it. The teacher took one kid's bridge to place it between the desks and while grabbing it, accidentally, crushed the main body of the bridge. The bridge failed almost immediately and the kid got a really bad grade. The teacher acted like nothing happened despite our complaints. Story 34. When we were freshmen in high school, my best friend's dad was dying of cancer. Her mom called the school to let her teachers know what was going on, but said, please don't tell your classes. My daughter will tell the people that she wants to know. Then my friend's dad passed away. And the next day, our English teacher decided to tell the whole class why my friend was out. And he said, we were asked not to say anything, but I can't imagine she would want to keep it a secret at this point. I was flipping livid because I knew that she still would not have wanted everyone to know. She had been pretty Ono specific. So I sat there, boiling with rage. He asked to speak to me at the end of class and said, Hey, I don't know you well enough yet to know if that was your angry face or your sad face. I told him I was just tired. Still upset with myself to this day that I didn't tell him off, but I was too timid at 14. Story 35. Third grade teacher told my parents I needed a shrink because my handwriting was so bad. I saw a psychiatrist weekly for about a month. I don't remember much. Nice guy. Anyway, apparently he called the school and out my teacher over it. Taking the stance, she was harassing kids for BS reasons. All he told my parents was to get me a typewriter. Handwriting is still cow, but you should see my WPM. Story 36. How would you guys like one with a little added justice in there? Talked about this one before, but it's good. Worst thing the teaching staff at school ever did was be the cause of a nearly fatal asthma attack. So this story takes place in the 90s in the UK, and I was one of the county's worst offending asthmatics. Every month without fail, I'd be in the hospital with an asthma attack and had some of the strongest steroids and inhalers available to a child. For those too young or clueless to remember this time, the 90s was rife with asthmatic children suffering in schools. Children passed away, but I was completely unaware of this, and I was very nearly one of those children. The day started out well enough, but quickly deteriorated by first playtime, as I recognized a particular wheeze that wasn't going away. It was one of the first signs of an impending asthma attack, so I approached a teacher and told them I needed to take my inhaler. My medications were kept in the head teacher's office because adults assumed, perhaps not unfairly, that a child should not have their possibly life-saving sweets on them in case it gets lost. The teacher told me that I wasn't sick enough to require it and to go and play. I knew the wheeze was getting worse. I could feel it. Perhaps because I was just a child, the teachers believed that I wasn't capable of understanding my own disease, which makes me laugh these days as by the age of just five, I was an expert in self-administering my own nebulizer and steroid doses. Sad, I know. No matter what I said throughout the day to any adult that would listen, I was not taken to get my inhaler, and my asthma slowly got worse, with absolutely no attention paid by any of the teaching staff. Finally, school ended, and I was picked up by my mother. Because we lived close, she elected to walk me home. I didn't manage the halfway mark before I suffered an inevitable asthma attack and promptly passed out through lack of oxygen in the middle of the street. The rest of this story was told to me secondhand and through family legend. An ambulance was called. I was rushed to hospital to get my asthma back under control, spent a few days at the NHS's finest hospital, and eventually, my mother heard the story of how I'd ended up so ill. She hit the goddamn roof! Family legend talks about her scream lecturing the head teacher in his own office for half an hour straight about the fact I had nearly passed away, that all the teaching staff and himself should have been well aware of my medical condition. And its severity and his own negligence was the reason I had spent time in an oxygen tent. Legal threats were thrown around, the whole nine yards. Which was why, after that particular event, I was regularly checked in on by the head teacher and was actively encouraged to take my medication if I wanted. And if I uttered a word about my inhaler not working as well as it should, I was unquestionably whisked home in the head teacher's personal car. Story 37. When I was in kindergarten, a kid with a speech impediment told me a hilarious joke. I was a humor-loving kid, so naturally I was laughing very hard. Cue the teacher. She was the worst and always blamed me for things. She flipped my card, a discipline system where there's this board full of little paper bits, and the color determines how good you have been, 
Every time it's flipped, the color changes for the worse. And to a five-year-old sensitive girl, it was devastating. I got yelled at and my parents were called. My mom was pissed because she knew I wasn't a mean child. I was actually very kind to everyone I met. The teacher thought I was laughing at his speech impediment, not the joke. And she was denying everything my parents said. I had a miserable day over a funny joke. Story 38. In third grade, I hate the teacher ever. Not a single parent liked her. Think of that person who hates kids but loves power. Yeah, that bad person, and she hated me. I have no idea why, but she made my life hell. She would make fun of my looks. Handwriting. Admittedly, it is terrible, but no need to be unpleasant to a third grader. She'd shame me for getting answers wrong. Then she started yelling at me when I asked to be closer to the board. I couldn't see it, but I guess she thought I was lying. When I got glasses that year, she still made me sit in the very back. It wasn't until I complained to my mom's friend, another teacher, that I was moved to the front. I still hate her. Story 39. We had a geology assignment that involved a written portion, as well as collecting rocks. I went all out and mounted the rocks in a box, instead of sticking them in bag and stapling it to the assignment like the rest of the class. When we got our marks back, I had failed, because according to the teacher, I hadn't handed in any rocks. I told him I had handed in an entire box, and after some arguing, he eventually looked for it in his mess of a cupboard. He found the clearly labeled box, but because he had to go and find it, he kindly increased my mark to 50%, which was the lowest in the class. Story 40. I had a few, but this must be the worst, or at least funniest one. In high school, we had a biology teacher who had a noticeable limp, hence her nickname among the students, Hair Flick. If you don't know the reference, you're missing out on a lot. Somehow one day, just before biology, someone pushed me into a wall with some protruding pipe, and I banged my knee quite hard. I couldn't walk properly due to swelling, so I was literally limping. And Frau Flick wouldn't let me call my parents to come pick me up so I could get it checked, but said that mind heals the body. Rich coming from an actual biology teacher, one colleague, an entitled golden youth piece of cow, said his knee is going to pop, and poor janitor will have to clean the blood. She laughed and said that Limpy will be okay. His next comment I can only loosely translate to, Kettle called the candy. We were both sent to the principal's office. Psychologist was called as well. And the stupid fudge just repeated everything, clearing me of any guilt. They just said, behave in the future, both of you. Mind, though, both principal and psychologist gave me a 45-minute lecture on concentration while in class just because my cell phone fell out of my shallow pocket, which I forgot to close. Both that and the fact Frau Flick sent both of us to the principal was extremely unfair, and I still hate them all for that. Knee was fine after a week. Story 41. When I was in 8th or ninth grade, my math teacher would go over the previous day's homework at the start of each lesson by calling out a question number and a student's name, and that student would give the answer. One day we had about 40 short questions, and on, say, the 10th one, she called on a student, D. D said she couldn't get the answer for that one. Teacher accused D of not doing her homework. D said she did the homework. Number 10 was the only one she didn't get. Teacher proceeded to ask D for the answer of number 11, 12, 13, etc. On about number 30, D said she couldn't get that one. Teacher glared at her and accusingly said, I thought number 10 was the only one you couldn't get. The same teacher once excused me for accidentally doing the wrong worksheet for homework. I was an A student while the student behind me who made the exact same mistake got demerits. She was an awful teacher. Story 42. I once took a seminar on the politics of mass genocides in my last year of college. We watched Schindler's List and discussed Schindler and whether or not he was a hero. Everybody else in the class was talking, and I realized they were all very opinionated, and they were all very much not Jewish. I spoke up and said, Hey, it doesn't really matter what we think of him, does it? When he helped so many people and saved so many lives, we Jews see him as a great hero, and we've honored him in a number of ways. Isn't his impact and the graciousness of those he aided what really matters? The professor then rolled his eyes and said, I'm not interested in the Jewish perspective. In a discussion about the Holocaust, okay, story 43, I had a few one teacher I'd used to give me a detention every Monday because I missed her class, which would be fair enough if I didn't have a music lesson at that time every Monday. She knew I presented proof, and she would still give me a detention every time got sent out of class because I fell off my chair. To get into uni in the UK, they base offers on your predicted grades. I scored 90% in the further maths end of year exams, and my teacher predicted me a C grade, 60%, because he didn't like me. Story 44. Where to begin? 1. I sliced open my leg when I was 10. The ER doctor did an awful job cleaning and sewing it up so it was healing really poorly, and I needed a wheelchair because I would pass out from pain whenever I lowered the leg and blood would get to it. The PE teacher did not excuse me from class and I was not allowed to sit in the wheelchair in other classes. 
2. My AP U.S. history teacher wrote on the board on the first day of class, good grades equal sign good college equal sign good money equal sign happiness, and proceeded to explain how this was true. This same teacher taught WEW two in two days through his personal family history, escaping Poland to Israel, and then in the 60s, cheating immigration policies to get into the U.S. 3. Failing my AP political science project because my views did not align with hers. Literally, the comment on the grading rubric was, this is not a policy I would vote for. BTW, this was all in one of the consistently highest rated public school districts in the country. Story 45. Not as bad as the other posts here, but I'm still a bit salty about what happened. For context, it's important to know the teacher was an old woman who'd also been my mom's teacher, whom, for some reason, she hated. She had my mom locked in a closet once and forgot about her until she went home herself. So when I became one of her students, she naturally hated me too. This resulted in multiple bullying actions, which I could not understand, because I had no idea what I'd done wrong. Once when I was six, we had to write down words below images. Kids who managed the task to finish quickly were allowed to color the images. I was ready quick enough to be able to color, so I did happily. Suddenly, the teacher appears behind me with an eraser and erased all my words. We used pencil. Next, she got mad at me and publicly scolds me because I had started coloring before writing my words and ridiculed me in front of my classmates for being too stupid to understand the task. She made me write the words again, and of course I wasn't finished in time, so she scolded me again and gave me a bad grade. Two years later, they mixed up all the teachers, and I was in her class again, and she treated me like cow again, like using me as an example to explain an ambiguous concept. I was one of the best students in her class, but she emphasized on my negative qualities so that I and everyone else, including my parents, thought I was mediocre at best. The most unfair thing I've seen happening to someone else was the swimming teacher who lifted one of the boys by the head. It was terrifying, and I still wonder how that boy didn't break his neck. Story 46. I've told this story before, but in seventh grade, my social studies teacher took one of my reports and put it on the projector in front of the whole class with my name on it and told the entire class that my handwriting was the handwriting of a serial killer. Knowing that I was a nerd and one of the unpopular kids in class, this did not exactly help improve my cash. And really, Mr. Stevenson, just because you were right does not mean that it's okay. Story 47. When I was in middle school, we had class projects that computers were required to create and present. On the day we presented, one of the students got locked out of their computer after getting their password wrong too many times. One of us probably would have been happy to lend her our computers, but the teacher immediately said she was getting a zero on the project and brushed her off. As far as I can remember, he did not have a makeup policy. Story 48. I am Chinese-Canadian, but I'm a banana, e.g. Whitewash. I attended a university program that was whiter than a KKK costume in chlorine bleach, and we were discussing world trade. So many times people would call on me because there was this mentality of China made goods effect, Western economies badly. I actually snapped once and said, if everything that was made in China disappeared from this room right now, we would be right now and nobody would have a mug of coffee in their hands now. If I made the same argument today, I would use the all smartphones would stop working. It got tiring to always be the student called on for diversity. I also had something funny happen during a club meeting. I was the marketing director of the Boy Straight Alliance in university, and the funniest fudge thing was one of the club members was attempting to solve a calculus equation on the board. She turned to me, the only Chinese person in the GSA, and straight up said, Astrangione, can you help me with this? My dry comment was, sorry, that's why I'm taking XXX major. No math! Story 49. Started at this high school in Ontario midway through grade 9. Was living in Alberta before that. French wasn't mandatory. Fast forward to grade 12. Oh no, I need a French credit to graduate. So I was put in a grade 9 French class. One day, our teacher sent half the class across the hall to work on our projects. I was part of the group across the hall. Everyone's goofing off. Put my headphones on and got to work. I hear someone screaming at me. It was our teacher. Take my headphones off with a confused, excuse me. Teacher screams, what are you doing? Me, uh, doing my work, teacher. You're not allowed to listen to music in my class, me. I'm sitting here minding my own business, doing my work, teacher. Go to the principal's office right now. Principal end up giving me the French credit. Story 50. One of my teacher received a projectile in her back while she was writing on the board. She became mad and asked who did it. We all knew who did. It was this little cow with a few screw loose in his head, but no one was a rat. So she decided to punish the entire class unless the culprit came forward or was denounced. No one talked. We were punished and received detention Saturday morning, and the week after that, and the week after until she knew who did it. We lasted two months like that until they gave up. 
This unpleasant person was never punished except alongside all of us. Story 51. First grade. Whenever anyone did something wrong or got an answer wrong to a question, our homeroom teacher made that particular student stand up. She taught the rest of the class to loudly chant in unison, Oi! I can't describe well in words what it sounded like, but it was sing-songy and started in a high pitch and ended in an even higher one. Happened to me once for getting a math problem incorrect. I'll never forget. You were a bad teacher, Mrs. Z. Story 52. Oh, I forgot this story. In elementary school, my class was having a little cookout in the courtyard for some reason. Right before lunch is being served, I get called into the principal's office and seated directly across from him at his desk. Why did you do it? He asks. Do what? I reply, completely unaware of why I was there. I just wanted to go get my hot dog and play like the other kids. Why did you call him that? He demands. Call who what? I reply, incredibly lost. Why did you call Charlie A? He finally answers. I am a six-year-old white boy in a predominantly white suburb. Charlie was the first African-American student to be bussed in from the inner city in a new program that was implemented. I, of course, knew none of any of this. What six-year-old would? What's a... I ask. And this is how I learned the N-word from my elementary school principal. My mother got called in from work. She swooped into that office incredibly pissed off as she grew up in the inner city, worked there, and had numerous African-American friends. A lot of words were had between them, and it eventually becomes known that Charlie falsely accused me of this just to cause a ruckus. I never got my hot dog. Story 53. Had an unpleasant person physics teacher in seventh grade with whom we shared a mutual hatred. I hated physics and his stupid teaching methods. To show how electrons traveled, he would take a textbook and run along a row, students hitting them over their heads with the book. The shower found it hilarious. He hated me for commenting on his borderline certifiable behavior. Well, anyway, he thought he was a hoot. So one day he draws a tank of water to showcase some phenomenon and draws a fish in the water tank and makes a poor joke about it. No one laughs. Now my friend cracks a joke about his poor joke and everyone laughs. Guess which one student gets an F and gets sent to the principal? Yup, me, for laughing with everyone else. Hate him. Heard the old boozy finally got fired and later passed away of liver failure. Hooray! Story 54. When I was in fourth grade, I was having trouble learning the material for math class. I was a slow learner late bloomer. Multiplication was a real struggle for me at first. I could manage with the lower numbers, but once a problem came up with higher numbers, for example, 7x7, etc., I had to write it out the long way, 7 plus 7, 7 times. Well, I'm doing this on my math assignment. And at this point, my scratch paper is chock full of addition into multiplication, but I'm only a handful of problems into it. Unbeknownst to me, my math teacher is watching me over my shoulder. He then proceeded to berate and make an example of me in front of the entire class because I wasn't as quick to learn as the rest of them. I'm still kind of bitter about it. Story 55. My behavior had begun to go downhill at school. I had zero detentions in year 5, UK school BTW, and halfway through year 6, I was at about 20 detentions in my record of achievement, aka homework diary, aka book to show your parents you keep getting detentions. My parents were super strict and couldn't believe how badly I was behaving. Just messing about in class and being stupid with friends. I mean, I was 10, 11 years old. Come on. And they made me visit a boarding school and had threatened to send me there and make me move schools if I was to get any more. I bucked my act up for a few weeks after that. But in one class, I got a detention and my name on the board for talking in class, even though it actually wasn't me, but a boy near where I was sitting. I obviously argued my innocence, knowing what I'd been threatened with, as did the teacher and most my class, I should say, too. And she gave me another detention on top for arguing back. This continued for about 10, 15 minutes straight of her giving me an additional detention every time I tried to say anything back or argue. I ended up getting to 14 detentions and was actually sitting at the back on the classroom, crying my eyes out in the corner of the room as I thought that was it. I was going to be forced to move school and lose all my friends and everything. The teacher ended up just giving me a double detention at lunch in the end, and my parents were basically bluffing and never sent me to boarding school despite taking me to visit it as a power play. I still think of it as a real banana move by that teacher, as my parents had spoke to them directly about their concerns, and the teacher was obviously enjoying seeing me so upset and was getting a kick out of their position of power over me. It's really cruel looking back at it. After that point, my detentions went through the roof as I realized the threat wasn't going to be followed through, and I had over 40 detentions in year 7 and again in year 8. I still look back on those years as the most fun in my life, and I do it all again in a heartbeat. The memories are still my happiest and funniest looking back. Nearly 24 now, by the way. And have a degree. Yeah, kids, work hard, but play hard too. You can still get your dream qualification job if you work hard, 
and still get to have some fun en route. Story 56, the first class of high school. My science teacher wouldn't allow any boys to go to the bathroom. I ended up having a pretty bad stomach ache during a test. Asked him if I can go, he said no and told me to sit back down. I said it was an emergency and he didn't budge. I then said I had to go to the nurse. He couldn't deny me that. I went to the bathroom, dropped a huge cow, and went straight to the front office to tell them what happened. Story 57. In 11th grade, I had a super bad allergic reaction in the hospital over a month, and my eyes were super sensitive after. My doctor told me to wear sunglasses because light was going to be bright for the next few weeks. My school was strict about a lot of random things. For example, if you had jeans that were discolored, you got in trouble, but if you go around and pants a ton of people, the teachers wouldn't care. Second or third day back, I'm still wearing the sunglasses. All teachers received an email about it and told them what was up. And one of my teachers has to leave early for an emergency, so he sends us to another teacher's class because she had a study hall, and our class was small. My teacher was a cool guy and even sent her an email saying, Hey, this kid just went through hell and is still super weak and recovering, so be nice to him. Well, when I walk into the class, that teacher decides to just berate me and cause a scene. The second I walked in, she just started yelling, Who do you think you are? Why do you think you can openly defy school rules just because you're not in your usual class? You look really dumb, and I bet everyone else thinks so as well. I just said, I'm going to the library. I don't care what you do. Apparently, she tried calling security on me, but my classmates basically told her he almost passed away. He's in a fudge ton of pain. Lay off him, and she didn't. Never apologized. Fudge, you miss sissy. Another teacher. I brought a laser pointer with me one day, and another homeroom teacher saw it and told me not to bring it back. Next day, I didn't bring it back, but another kid brought theirs. The homeroom teacher thought I had mine and starts flipping out. Tells me to give it to her right now or she's calling security for insubordination. Tell her several times I don't have one and that it's another student that has it. She doesn't believe and starts going through my stuff. Other kids in my homeroom start saying I didn't have one, and the kid that had it says it was his and shows it to her. She still doesn't believe them and calls security. I get suspended for three days, and even when they finally believe that I didn't have it, they will susp send me for insubordination. Story 58. Had a teacher do some oral tests in class and grade them. First, a girl is chosen and she does really bad, so she gets like a 510. She starts crying silently. My turn, she asks some other stuff. I do almost everything right, so I get an 8.510. Then the teacher goes back to the crying girl and gives her another chance to improve her grade. Unfair thing. The questions she asks are the same she asked me. She obviously answered them all correctly, including the one I got wrong. Because the teacher explained the question after my wrong answer. Final grade. 9-5-10 because she got it all right. Still pisses me off.